Hi guys, Brendan from TAP. And today I've just got a, a case study here to show you the importance of when you're testing ignition coils, testing the insulation of the coil. So good old TS Astra 1.8. Um, customer complaint was a check engine light and spluttering going up hills. So um, sounds easy enough, you know, we're expecting probably a misfire um, under load type ignition problem. Um, so scanned it, got a misfire cylinder 3 code, um, went for a drive, drove fine. So I let it sit in the corner um, with an accelerator um, pedal tool on there to, to raise the RPM with the bonnet down, got it nice and hot, went for a drive and eventually I did get some misfires under load. Um, had a dead misfire at that point which I wanted to see if we you know, finally had a, a dead fault or if the injector probably got disabled when it set the code. So I came in on the shared power wire for the coil, I just put an amp clamp on and I could see all four of the coils which in this case being a sort of older style system where the transistor um, for each coil lives in the ECU. So each of these four wires here are um, the earths for each of the, the coils even though it's sort of one unit. Um, they were all, all there, so I had four current ramps, and if I back probed along the line, I could see burn time on all of them as well. So at that point, electrically, the coil's working, right? But I still su um, suspect, suspect an ignition um, problem, so I went to manually testing the thing. Um, you could really, if you wanted to, you could probably try and catch it through the, um, the scope and, and be able to see the difference in the burn time and things like that. Um, via the, the primary side that we were scoping but I think in this case just take it out and mechanically test it. So I'll show you why it's important to do this test um, with a couple of extra steps. So this physical test of the coil I've got just a um, spark tester you know, the numbers represent kilovolts and the spark's going to jump across there obviously got that going to earth so that there's somewhere for the spark to travel. Um, keep a grounded lead or in my case I like to use a test light so you'll see my test light is Connected to the ground, if I put it on a positive, it lights up. We're going to be able to use that to run along the coil, and if there's any insulation problems, it's going to jump to ground through there as opposed to having to jump across here, which represents the spark plug. Um, these style coils, they can be hard if you don't have a scan tool. So at the moment, I've got it still plugged in, I've got the ignition on, and on the scan tool with these, a nice little handy feature so we can go to functional tests, actuator tests. These white screens are much more common on the Solus since my last update, so I don't know what Snap-on's done. They've obviously added in a lot of things, but it's made the main menus slower to get through, which is a bit annoying. Um, so we can choose each of these coils to operate. So I'm going to go number three, being that's the one that we've given a path to ground with our tooling. Okay, so we just press start, and that'll start counting down. It gives you ten sparks, right? So it shows up there. So jumping a, about a 25 um, kV gap gets out to even about 30. If I can get to 30, I'm pretty happy. You know, you obviously look at other things that come with experience, like how thick it is, nice and blue as opposed to a wimpy orange. Now if I start that again, you see, oh, I might close it up a bit because we've reached the, the point that it can't jump very well anymore. I'm just trying to get the right angle. It's happening in, in my vision, I can see it, whereas doesn't show up on camera very well. Go one more time. There you go, so you can see it. Now I'm going to run this test um, lamp and you'll see quite easily it jumps out beside there. One more. So if I run along here, we get to there and it wants to jump out and I'm making a good centimeter or so there, right? Now just to prove that that is no good, I'm going to go to one next to it. Set my test up again so that we're going to go on to cylinder two. Cool. So we're now on cylinder two. If I drag it along here, you know, nothing, nothing jumping out. It's still jumping the spark in the test. So, you know, ideally we'd be running all the way along this, all over the top, the bottom. You don't get much time on this, but if I was on another coil where we can use, say, an off-cast spark tester, or even, you know, sometimes we don't have the fittings or whatnot, um, just doing it with the car running with one lead off or whatever, we'd run all along there. And we want to give it somewhere to jump to ground. And as you can see on, sorry, number three, that was a good centimetre. 
And if we look in there, there is not a centimetre of gap until we get to the head. So that spark would easily be jumping and arcing out on the side of the, the cylinder head there. So although we have electrically a good coil, um, we have poor insulation um, coming in, in this area here and it's easily able to jump out. So the thing does need an ignition coil. Um, it's going to get a set of spark plugs as well and then we'll just check it, you know, do some basic things like checking fuel trims just to make sure there's not a, um, you know, a gross failure, big lean um, code that's a big lean problem, sorry, so positive fuel trims that um, could be making that coil, the spark, have to work harder. But I think it's just going to be a typical ignition coil, but in this case, um, insulation problem as opposed to an electrical problem. So I hope that helps out guys that um, haven't tried that method. So if you are going to use a spark tester like that, um, which hey, it's fine, you know, keeping it low tech is absolutely fine, gets the job done. Um, make sure we're checking for any um, paths of, of earth leakage and that'll, that'll um, find a lot of problems for you. Thanks guys, see you next time.